It's the way cooler cousin of ginger ale, one of the main ingredients to a Moscow mule. And it's about time that we start making it from home. Now, if you don't know what ginger beer is, it's kind of like ginger ale, but it's not force carbonated by a machine and then a bunch of flavors and high fructose corn syrup, blah, 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 blah. Well, actually, it can have high fructose corn syrup, but the point is ginger beer is typically a naturally flavored and naturally carbonated beverage made with, well, ginger. It's a little less sweet and kind of spicy from the ginger. Now, a lot of online recipes with ginger beer include things like brewer's yeast or champagne yeast to carbonate it, but I prefer to actually ferment mine because you know me, this is what I do, this is how I be, which I think is pretty dope and it's, you know, kind of good for you. Now, let's do this. So, since we're not using any brewers or active dry yeast, we need to cultivate our own wild yeast with something called a ginger bug. Think of the ginger bug kind of like a sourdough starter for the fermented soda world. I'll explain as we make it. First thing you need to do is combine two cups or 500 milliliters of filtered water, two tablespoons or 28 grams of granulated sugar, and two tablespoons or 22 grams of finely chopped ginger in a one quart glass or plastic container. Don't use metal because as this mixture becomes acidic, it's gonna react with the metal and that's a no good. You don't, you don't want that. So just mix those two together until the sugar's dissolved, cover with cheesecloth and let it sit for 24 hours. Now, moving forward, all you need to do is add that same amount of ginger and sugar to the container every 24 hours until it becomes fizzy, which will take about two to three days. It takes like five minutes, so it's, it's not so bad, you know, it's not like that big of an inconvenience in your day. Just do it before you go to bed. Now, once it's fizzy and active, we're ready to make our ginger beer. Oh, and two quick things. Don't forget to label your ginger bug so you know when you started it and you can keep track of the date. That is really important. Also... Uh, I'll explain as we go what you're going to do with the liquid, but you're not going to be adding any additional water during these feedings. You're literally just adding sugar and ginger. I know you're like, well, what if it stops dissolving? Just keep doing it. By the time it's fizzy, you're going to be ready to use it anyway, so e e we'll explain how to do that later. Now, once that ginger bug is fizzy, you're ready to go on the ginger beer. So you're going to start with two quarts of water, and you're going to pour that into a large uh pot. I don't know why I couldn't think of the word, but yeah, that. To that, you're going to add one and a quarter cup plus two tablespoons or 273 grams of granulated sugar. Now, you, you could pull that back a little bit if you want to do half a cup or 63 grams. You know, that's sort of your minimum amount of sugar you need in there. Then you're going to add a quarter cup or 54 grams of grated ginger. Bring that up to a boil and then reduce the heat to a simmer and simmer for five to eight minutes. Then let it cool down naturally until it reaches room temperature, leaving all the ingredients in there to steep like a tea. Now, once that's reached room temperature, and when I say room temperature, I mean room temperature, not 102 degrees. Make sure that it is room temperature because you don't want to kill any of the yeast by accident if it's too hot. You're going to go ahead and strain it through a fine mesh colander, press out all those good juices that you want that. That's the good stuff. Then add in a half a cup or 110 grams of your ginger bug, which has also had the solid strained out, and the juice of three lemons. Mix that together until thoroughly combined, and then simply transfer that mixture to some flip top bottles, which you can buy online. I got these from Amazon. I'll give you a link in the description if you want to go grab some if you don't have any. You can also get them at Target and plenty of other places, so they're easy to find. Oh, and when you're filling these, make sure you give them at least two inches of headroom and open them over a sink. You want to know why? Now that doesn't usually happen, but you know, sometimes it does. And it, you know, not giving it enough headroom is usually the problem. Oh, and more importantly, these are going to sit out at room temperature with the flip bottle tops locked for three to six days or until they're fizzy to your liking. Now, once they've reached that point, you can refrigerate them. Just make sure that every day you're opening up the flip top bottle and sort of like burping them and allowing them to release some of that pressure. Otherwise they'll explode. So. <laughs> That's great. And because we're not barbarians, don't forget to label your container. Now, I usually let mine go for about three days at room temp, and then I just toss them in the fridge with their lids still locked, and uh, they're good to go. You don't have to burp them when they're in the fridge. That's it, ginger beer, fizzy goodness. Now, let's get another round of that fizzy goodness. Yeah. <laughs> All right, 
right guys, and that is it. Now this was a super fun one to do. I always love fermenting things. You guys know that I ferment too many things at this point. I literally bought a shelf in my apartment to put my fermented things on. Now the cool thing about this ginger bug, once you have it going, is that you can use it for things other than ginger beer. You can make pretty much anything into an effervescent soda with a ginger bug, and that is what is so cool about it. If you guys enjoyed this video or you learned something, leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you next week.